What's going on? My name's Jay, and today we're taking a look at the R Visual Camera Moves Transitions Pack for DaVinci Resolve. That is a mouthful. And make sure you stick around till the end because R Visual's got a pretty sweet deal for you guys. Let's take a look. All right, most of you know me and you know that when I'm out shooting in the field, I prefer to shoot in camera transitions, but sometimes that doesn't always work out. Every now and then, I get home and I put the footage into DaVinci Resolve and I realize that I either screwed up the filming on one of the transitions or I just forgot to film a transition in a spot where I really needed one. And in cases like that, I typically look to things like pre-made transitions and special effects and stuff like that. So when our visual reached out to me and they asked me to take a look at their new camera moves transitions pack, I was excited to take a look and I said, yeah, absolutely. Send them over. So over the last few days, I've taken some time and I've brought the transitions into DaVinci Resolve and I've used them on my own footage and I've been playing around with them, seeing what I liked, what I didn't like, and you know, figuring out, is this something that's good for you? Is this something that you would get value out of? Is it something that I would get value out of? So let's, let's unpack that real quick. The first thing that I noticed and the first thing I wanna talk about, and this is something that I really like, is there's really good documentation for these transitions. Like when I first, you know, started kind of poking around in the files, seeing what was what, I found a PDF called Tutorials. And when you open that up and you click on the link, it brings you to five different videos that cover everything that you need to know about these transitions. I mean, they show you how to bring them into DaVinci Resolve, bring them into your project, use them on your footage, edit them in Fusion, and even some troubleshooting tips if you're having issues. Now, most transitions packs that I've looked at, you know, have some kind of documentation as far as like how to bring them into DaVinci and use them on your footage. But like this level, first of all, the videos were super easy to understand. And second of all, it was just like a whole level. That, that whole like troubleshooting one was just next level. I was really, really impressed by that. The other thing that I was really impressed with was this, the sheer quantity and variety. I mean, when you think about it, this is one single transitions pack and you get 35 different transitions to use. And these are all, like I said, camera moves transitions. They're transitions that that simulate what I would normally shoot in camera when I'm out in the field. And there's 35 of these things and there's different, you know, different bins, different folders for different frame rates. So you've got 24 frames per second transitions, 25, 30, and 60. And 50 is coming soon. It's not quite ready yet, but that will be updated and all that. And that that's, I mean, that's awesome. And like I said, there's a variety of different transitions. You've got hits, you've got pans and spins and zooms and all flips and all sorts of different stuff. I mean, there's a ton of these things. Also, the whole process is just easy. I mean, bringing them into DaVinci Resolve, getting them into your project, putting them on your footage, even editing them in Fusion, is it's just easy it's literally drag and drop and like there's maybe one or two extra steps but you're pretty much good to go once you get these things into your timeline it's like I, it just it amazes me how well these things work and like even though they're super easy to use they're really really good quality i mean the motion blur is on point you got chromatic aberration you got all sorts of stuff and it they just look really, really good. Obviously, they don't look exactly like they would if you shot uh, an in-camera transition, like a whip pan that you drag and drop onto your footage is never gonna look the same as a whip pan that you do in camera, but this is probably the closest that I've ever seen. But just in case you don't like everything about it, just in case you don't like the way a certain transition looks, you can actually open up these transitions in Fusion and you can tweak them and kind of get them to the way that you look. So like if you're doing a, a zoom transition, for instance, you can actually change the zoom point on the transition, which comes in really handy when you're doing a zoom transition, actually. Like if you're doing a group of people and you want to zoom in, your next clip is of one of those people, you can actually change the zoom point. So when the zoom starts, it's going towards the person that you want to focus on in the next clip. It's super, super cool. Now there is one slight, I wouldn't call it an issue. It's more of an issue with DaVinci Resolve than it is with anything else. But like I said, you have transitions for 24 frames per second, 25 frames per second, 30 frames per second, and 60 frames per second. That does not, 
it, the only problem is it's a, exactly 24. So you have to use the 24 frames per second transitions on a 24 frame per second timeline. You can't use them on a 23.976 frames per second timeline. They won't work. I actually ran into that issue, had to reach out to them and like, he was really, really quick to respond. Uh, the guys over at R-Visual really, really quick to respond and let me know that yes, I actually have to use these transitions on the exact frame rate. I can't do the, you know, 59 point, what is it? 59.94, 23.98, I can't, I can't do them i can't use those timelines so that is one drawback but like i said i reached out to these guys about it and they're actually in talks with black magic design trying to figure out if maybe they can create transitions where you can use them on different timelines and if not they are going to go ahead and create transitions for the rest of the available timelines in DaVinci Resolve. All right, moving on, I've got a couple other things to touch on. First of all, the deal that I told you about in the beginning of this video, our visual has created a coupon code. So the first 30 people to click the link in the description of this video and purchase the Camera Moves Transition Pack with the coupon code JLipman will get 15% off, which is a pretty good deal considering that these things are fairly inexpensive to begin with. And then the last thing I wanna mention about these transitions is because there was so much work put into these and, and there's so much, you know, all the motion blur, chromatic aberration and all those things, because there was so much stuff that went into making these transitions look good, they are pretty graphics intensive. So you're gonna wanna use, you know, render cache fusion output when you're working in the timeline. You're go gonna wanna use proxy mode or create optimized media for your files. You wanna do everything that you can possibly do in order to get smooth playback in DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you wanna learn more about that, make sure you check out this video right here. And if you enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more about video editing, camera gear, and how to make better videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. And I'll see you in the next video. Go watch it now.